Ah, welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. Paul Brown, CEO of Paul Brown Companies, was our guest on our last week's show and his words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services website, newmanconsultingservices.com or our landing page, denelia.org. If you've been reading the news headlines about social media for the last few years, you may be tempted to think that merely opening a Twitter account will triple your revenue this year, or that you are only one blog post away from a guest spot on Oprah, or if you build a Facebook or LinkedIn page, customers will come in hordes. Then you look around at the real world and realize that, sadly, none of this is true. The truth is, social media, when used strategically over time, is the most powerful <coughs> form of marketing and market research the world has ever seen. But it's not a magic bean that grows overnight into business success. It's a platform for real work. The art is to know the best places to put that work so you get results. That's what we're going to talk about today. Today's topic is the power of social media. Joining us in the studio today as our honor guest is Danny Ladestro. Got it. Okay, president and CEO of Trend Up Incorporation. Incorporated. Uh, mahalo for joining us today, Danny. Thanks for having me, John. Welcome. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks, Danny. Welcome. So, Danny, would you share with our audience uh, a little about Trend Up and what prompted you to start the business? Sure. Uh, Trend Up is a company that I founded with my wife, Katie. Um, we started the company because uh, we had been doing social media with another company based off the mainland um, for a couple of years. Uh, learned a lot. It was a great experience. Yeah. And it was one of those things where we kind of looked at each other and said, wouldn't this be great if we did it on our own? Yeah. Um, and essentially what we do at TrendUp is we manage the social platforms for other businesses. So day-to-day -day operation stuff. We help them source and create content. Mm -hmm. We engage with their community, which is probably one of the most important parts. And then the marketing aspects so will help them build advertisements to reach more people, show, you know, show off their product and service as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are the top most used social media platforms in Hawaii? It's a great question. Um, I think here in Hawaii, you know, from personal experience and, and the businesses we work with, Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram are really popular. They're uh -huh. super powerful. Um, they have some of the largest user bases. Um, and so that means, you know, you have a wider demographic. There's, there's more options and more people to reach. Um, I'd say if you're trying to reach a younger demo, you know, like 13 to 17, 18 to 24, Snapchat's really mm. popular right now. Mm. It's growing super fast. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I don't even know what Snapchat is, but I, <laughs> I heard it was really good. I could just imagine. <laughs> so what is Snapchat? Snapchat is a, it's a platform where you can share short videos or pictures with friends and then the you know, the caveat is that it disappears after that. You yeah. can replay it once um, or a few times, right? And then it's and then it's gone oh, forever. Um, it's just another platform to message your friends. Um, and it's more raw and, and real and mm -hmm. uncut, right? There's no edited video. Um, it's kind of what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as leveraging that for a business, um, it's a great way to show people kind of behind the curtains, behind the scenes, what's happening. Mm -hmm. That being said, you've got to be aware that it is a younger demographic. Yeah. I think I read something like less than 2% or, or of the users on Snapchat are over the age of 50, so yeah. it really is a younger demo. That's why we haven't heard about it. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's uh, millennials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Correct. so Danny, uh, what are the benefits of outsourcing uh, to other companies your, uh, and marketing for management? For social media, I social think media. Um, the first two that come to mind would be the the time and money that you'll save. Mm. Time being, you know, now you as the business owner don't necessarily have to become a full fledged expert mm. or even proficient at marketing your business on social. It, it can be extremely time consuming, like mm -hmm. you said, Danelia. Mm -hmm. um, so just to learn and and put your business on multiple platforms is mm. takes a lot of time and resources. Mm -hmm. So. Once you find somebody who you can outsource to, you've, you've saved a ton of time right now. Mm -hmm. You can focus on the day-to-day -day stuff. And then money, you know, people pay us, of course, it's a business, right. but I think you'll, you'll be able to pay us less than what you'd pay somebody who you'd have to pay a full-time salary and benefits, right? Exactly, yeah. Now, now, how would a person go about finding 
someone to outsource to. That's me. probably the more difficult part, yeah. right? I mean, I've seen people as simple as, as posting Craigslist ads and you're not really yeah. sure what their experience yeah, is. Exactly you have right. no idea yeah. what they've done and, and maybe it's they, they're attractive because the price is so low. Right. And that can also be concerning. I think there's definitely, um, what's that saying? You, you get what you pay for yes. sometimes. Um, so it's, there's definitely, it's clouded. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of self-proclaimed gurus and experts. If anybody refers to themselves as that, you might want to be wary. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, LinkedIn's pretty powerful. You can go and check mm -hmm. somebody's resume quite, quite easily mm -hmm. and quickly and, and see, okay, where did you work before? Mm -hmm. What did you do? What is your experience? And then just talking to them face to face and really mm -hmm. figuring out what they're capable of doing. Is there a lot of companies out there like yourself? I think there are, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there are, there are a handful here in Hawaii. Um, there are larger marketing agencies that are kind of full service. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to focus solely on social just because it's changing so fast. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and there's, there's, I feel like there's kind of an opportunity to work with smaller businesses yeah. because they might not necessarily have the money to advertise traditionally. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's print or radio or TV, that can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. So dollar for dollar, you'll be able to reach more people on social than you would, say, with a radio or TV ad. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're talking about a really small business and they might only have $100, $200 to spare, mm -hmm. you can do a lot with that on Facebook mm -hmm. and with advertising, whereas I don't think you could walk into a radio station and say, hey, I've got 200 bucks. Yeah. What can you do for me, right? Yeah. They say, come back when you got a little yeah. more. Right. Yeah. That's so true. So how do you determine a company's brand and voice and what's the process? So. Again, personal experience, we haven't really had the opportunity to work with a startup. So mm -hmm. the brand for us has already kind of been established. Yeah. I think that our job then is to transfer that brand and, and make it work on social. Mm -hmm. So, you know, showcasing what the company is about, who they are. Um, and then the voice is probably something we have more influence over. Mm -hmm. We kind of get to decide and, and help the business owner. I mean, they're always involved, right? At the end of the day, it's their business. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that the voice is attractive to their target audience. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, I think, where we come into play. And the process for that is figuring out what makes them unique. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really easy way to kind of put yourself at the front of the pack mm -hmm. and, and amplify that. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, it's interesting for, for us, you know, we've been in business for over 30 years. Yeah, the congratulations. Difference, thanks. But the difference between branding, which really there was very little branding back then, right. as opposed to now, now you have to brand. Yeah. I mean, back then, you know, you just provided a great service, people mm -hmm. told each other. Not that that's changed. Change, but you have to do a lot more now. There are other ways to yeah, do it now right, too, right? right. Yeah, so you can kind of speed it up a little bit. Right, right. Okay. So what advice would you give companies just starting to grow and engage with their online communities? If I'm talking to a business owner who's starting tomorrow, right? Like they're they're planning on opening the Facebook page and an Instagram account and maybe a Twitter account. Um, I think the the advice would have to be engage with your audience as you would real time like we are right now. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we, we attribute social media, you know, answering questions and comments, they're just like you'd answer your business phone or an email. Mm -hmm. um, but it's gotta be instant. So mm -hmm. you need to put a lot of urgency into it mm -hmm. and, and treat these people like you would a real person. Mm -hmm. um, I think social media is so cool and so powerful because you have the ability to have a two-way real time conversation mm -hmm. with I mean, hundreds of people, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. I, it, I don't think you have the opportunity to do that when you're you're doing something like radio or TV, right? It's kind of a one-way message where you've got 30 seconds to tell them about you and why they should buy. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you can kind of set them up and, and build trust and equity mm -hmm. with your audience and say something okay. like, you know, here are a bunch of people that have used our service and our product, and this is why they like it. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of lead up to, you know, you earn the ask, mm -hmm. and then you say, here's where you can buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what uh, do you feel are the best social media uh, platforms to focus on um, to market and grow a business? Okay, um, I think that will be dependent on what type of business you have and then who you want to reach, right? I think Facebook and Instagram just can't be ignored. They're mm -hmm. too powerful yes. to really forego those. And you know, Facebook purchased Instagram, so those two platforms alone have so many features and the ability to advertise. The ad platform on Facebook is now connected with Instagram, so you can do a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like you've got to be on those two. Um, Instagram is very visually driven, so if you have a business that might not be as visually appealing, there are still ways around that. You mm -hmm. can showcase yourself, your employees, meeting with customers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, Twitter is interesting. 
uh, it's not as popular as I thought it would be here. Or oh, it the, might the be now. The, the president, president likes, likes it left, right, and center. You know. <laughs> that was one of his questions he asked. His, his, there you go. Um, <laughs> Should I continue to Twitter or not? <laughs> I think they're they're going through some changes. Yeah. I think it's it's still okay. going to be a valuable platform. I think it's it's extremely valuable to larger companies that maybe are looking for a direct line of communication with their audience and maybe more of a customer service aspect. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So Facebook, Instagram, for sure. You know, if you're talking business to business, LinkedIn is still powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, you can Very create powerful. a business page there and, and yes. post content there as you would, change the messaging a little bit so it's more professional. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm selling clothing or product, Pinterest is another really good one. They've got really great in-app shopping capabilities. What was that? Pinterest. 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 It's, very, it's another visually driven app. Okay. Um, and it's got one of the highest conversion rates as far as purchases within the app. Mm -hmm. Now that might change. Um, Instagram recently announced that they're going to do in-app shopping on Instagram, so they're currently testing it. That'll be really, really interesting. So if I'm, you know, a designer and I sell clothes or, or products and I have models, you can actually tag the individual products that they're wearing mm -hmm. and link directly to your website. Uh, so purchasing power will be extremely increased. Mm -hmm. All right. So how do you, how often should a company post to their social media? It's another great question. You guys got them all. Um, I think if you can stealing. post. <laughs> She's stealing from me. Um, that was his question. That was yours? Okay. So I saw you were like locked in. But, but I took a breath and she says. She's going. Hey, yeah, she too, pounced. Too slow. <laughs> snooze, you lose, man. Um, I think if you can post something one to two times per day, Ah. You're you're in really good shape. Mm. Now, having said that, I think every piece of content you post, you want it to pr provide some sort of value to mm. your audience. And what I mean by that is, give them information. You know, if I'm if I'm selling to other businesses, I might give away some stuff that we do on on a daily basis and mm. say, hey, were you aware that you could, you know, with Instagram, you convert into a business profile. You can click the little bars in the corner and see your your in-app analytics. Mm. You can get a, a snapshot of what your audience is doing, the times they're engaging with you. You know, mm -hmm. share information that might make their life better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you generate new ideas, and, and how long do you stick with one before you, you know, move on to the next? Um, brainstorming. I mean, classic brainstorming sessions. I think if I'm if I'm speaking again, if I'm speaking to a business owner who's just starting this, mm -hmm. and maybe they're in a, a creative rut. Um, you can always look for inspiration from larger companies, maybe people that you know are very successful or have been successful on social. Um, now, again, saying that, don't just copy and paste what they're doing, um, but be inspired by what they are doing and make it fit for your business. Okay. Great, thanks. We're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Danny Ledestro, the president of Trend Up, regarding our topic, the power of social media. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be returning in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hey, has your signal just been taken over or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward. And the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper to bumper traffic. And this show is dedicated to talking to f with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon and let's move Hawaii forward. This 
this is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at Think Tech HI if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Danny Ledestro, the president of Trend Up, regarding our topic, the power of social media. I'm Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back to the show. So, Danny, we're going to put you through your paces. Okay? Let's do it. All right. Ready. Share with you, with us and our viewers, if you will, uh, what advice would you give uh, new businesses that want to utilize social media to that platform to market their business? I think, you know, we kind of talked about bringing value in mm -hmm. your content, right? And, and giving that to your audience. I, and we can expand on that a little bit. I think it's really important to not get lost in just wanting to post content all the time. There needs to be some sort of strategy behind it. Um, I think for a lot of businesses, it's like you said, Danilia, increase sales, right? Mm -hmm. You want to kickstart it, but it doesn't happen overnight. It's not right. a magic bean. I love That's that right. analogy. Yeah. Um, so I'll give you a, a, a solid example. You know, we work with a, a local gym, Kakako Fitness, um, and they've got a bunch of personal trainers in there. So if I were a trainer and, and the things that I try and tell them to do is share things with your audience on social and treat them as if they were a potential customer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you're targeting young professionals and they're working a nine to five and they're having trouble losing weight because they're out eating lunch every day right. with their employees, right? Or, yes, their, or their yeah. friends at work. Um, give them a piece of information of how to stay on track while mm -hmm. ordering out or an at-home workout that they can do if they're not comfortable coming to the gym yet. Mm -hmm. Really easy, simple things like that. I think people are scared to do that because they feel like they're giving too much away for free mm -hmm. and they're going to put themselves out of business. But plain and simple, it's just personal trainers would have been out of business forever ago because yeah. you could go on YouTube and find Navy SEALs that are telling you how to yeah. get a six pack. Yeah. So they still need you yes. and they're going to need you. It's, it's about building that trust and, and equity, if you will, and, and saying, I'm good enough at my job to give this away to you mm -hmm. so that when you're ready, you're going to come to me because I want to do right by you right now. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready to buy, you'll come back. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say trust? I think mm -hmm. that's a very important thing. People trust you. They right. will allow you. Uh, anyone that wants to move forward in their business, they have to develop that trust. Absolutely. And, I think uh, that's, that's one of the most important things you have to do. Mm -hmm. So what are your top three keys to achieving uh, success in social media? I think first, you've got to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see a lot of people that pick it up and put it down fairly quickly because mm -hmm. it's not working for them, right? right? And there's a million and one reasons why that could have been. Mm -hmm. um, so be consistent about the amount of content you're posting, um, the direction, the voice, the branding, everything kind of has to align in order to reach your, your target audience. Mm -hmm. um, value, we just talked about that. Make sure you're bringing enough value so that you're attracting new people and you're retaining the people that you that you want mm -hmm. um, and the other would be compassion or, or caring mm -hmm. um, and an easy way to do that is engaging with your online community treat mm -hmm. them like real people have conversations that's the power that you have mm -hmm. through a, a cell phone now really it's mm -hmm. the smartphone you can type a message and respond to comments and do it as quickly as you can you know there's a, another study that we read by I think it was digi day and they ran a survey that said, you know, there's an, been a massive increase in the amount of customer inquiries via social media, mm -hmm. right? So it's a whole nother channel where people want to reach out to your business. It's just, mm -hmm. it's more comfortable mm -hmm. for them instead of calling and, and worrying that they're going to mm -hmm. get sold to, right? So yeah. instead, I want to ask you on my own terms. So with that in mind, and the survey, it was like 60 to 70% of the people expected an answer within 60 minutes, but that mm -hmm. was the top end. Mm -hmm. They really wanted you to come back to them within 5 to 15 minutes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. so true. Just like email. I mean, people right. email expect you to come right back to them. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I get it because it's like, yeah. it's almost like a lead. It yeah. really is. A right. lead, it could be. Right. Does it always pan out? No. Oh. But again, if you show them that you care, yeah. you have a better chance of them coming back. Right. There's a, a really good app. This is a great trick. 
uh, it's not really a trick, it's just a piece of advice. So there's a, it's called the Pages app. You can find it in the App Store. You connect it to your business account for Facebook and now Instagram too. It's got a unified inbox. So mm -hmm. all notifications that come through Facebook and Instagram go to that app mm -hmm. and you can answer them right there. So our phones oh, cool. are constantly That's buzzing. That's what I was That's about cool. to talk yeah, about. Right. Because yeah. if you're not sitting there watching, right. you know, I mean, and that's an all day job. Yeah, you know, it really is. I mean, and, and that's why we tend to put our phones off to the side mm -hmm. because if we don't. Right. You know, we're constantly on them. You know, we don't have time to do anything yeah. but answer the questions, but people want their answers. They, and, they do. And, and, and that's your audience, and you need to. You've got to nurture questions. it. And that's why you have to outsource. Because exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> because so call you us. Yeah. She stole it, it again. Right. I'm coming around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You see? Okay. Well, so that's right. Great minds think alike. What do you think are the biggest, some of the biggest mistakes that companies make when it comes to social media? I kind of touched on it in that, in that last question. Mm -hmm. I think um, the lack of consistent or inconsistency, really. Yeah. Um, picking it up and putting it down yeah. too quickly. You know, we... We were at an event a while back, and we were talking to a business owner, and and we were telling him what we do and and how awesome you know Facebook ads are. We were all pumped up. You know something had just changed mm -hmm. with with how they were serving ads, or there was a new feature or something. Um, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I tried that, and uh, didn't work for me." Mm -hmm. So I kept digging. I just wanted to know more. I was mm -hmm. like, "Well, you know, how much did you spend? How many ads did you run?" I ran one ad, uh. and it to me it's like. You got to ask yourself when you played t-ball or, or a sport when you're a kid, right? You didn't just have one at bat and then quit, yeah. right? Because you struck out. It's right. you got to keep building. You got to keep going. So, and it's I totally understand. It's completely overwhelming mm -hmm. because people have been doing it since day one, since right. inception, right? So there are companies that are just way ahead of the game, and you have to kind of play catch up. But they're you know welcome to the digital age where there's yes. so many online sources where you can learn. You don't necessarily have to go to a university and take a course right. on how to do social. Again, but just make sure you're verifying the source you're learning from that they're credible. Right, okay. right. All right, so how much content, uh, well, how much promotional content mm. uh, should a, a business put on their, their uh, uh, platform or non-promotional? Is there a, a balance between the two, the promotional and the non-promotional? Absolutely. Um, kind of ties back into one of the mistakes we see being made a lot is is using the platform as solely a place to sell. Uh, I think that's really unattractive to, mm -hmm. to people. I, and you get something you know like pitch fatigue if you're if you're constantly serving ads or promotions. So I'll give you an example. If if we're working with uh, you know most of our customers, we post five to seven times a week. Some are are down to three just for mm -hmm. cost reasons. Mm -hmm. But if I'm posting five times a week for them across a couple of platforms, one or two might be a sales driven piece of content mm -hmm. and we'll we'll lead up to that like we talked about you know set them up Monday will be a piece of content it's an article that's relevant to your industry and then we're, we're showing a, a video posted by one of your users or your customers explaining how they love the product or service Wednesday might be something similar to that in a, a five-star Yelp review and then you're gonna follow up with the ask mm -hmm. um, so I would say keep that to a minimum obviously you want to sell but if you you're competing with everybody else. Everybody yeah. else wants to sell too. So right. stand out by by giving something away, that building that value, and then ask. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how many people can sell without even asking. Yeah. Just because you've built that trust, yeah, and you're like, ah, you've really showed off your product and service. You don't even have to ask me. I'm just yes. you give them enough pieces of information where they're able to make that decision on mm -hmm. their own. Mm -hmm. And that's the key, making that decision on their own. Right. You, know, you want to lead them to, be it. Told what to exactly. Do. Exactly. So if you were conducting this interview. What one question would you ask that we haven't asked yet? I thought about that a lot. Um, I think I would ask, you know, if I was a business owner sitting across from, from all of us, I'd ask a question like, um, how do I ensure that I don't become too repetitive with mm. the content that I'm posting, mm. right? I think that's, a, that's another fear or maybe another mistake that we see mm. is same thing every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. And that's okay, you know, if you have like a theme that's going on, you want to pick a day that's going to be the same every time, that's fine. Mm. Um, so the answer to that would be, you know, calendar meetings or, or build a content calendar. So mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to have a business with employees, um, it could be a fun experiment to kind of bring them all in, bring them all together, have lunch one day and say, hey, does anybody have any exciting ideas? Mm -hmm. Let's forecast the next four weeks. Um, you know, if we're working with a restaurant, we might check up on, you know, there's like national holidays for everything. Now, yeah, that's right? so true. Fried cheese yes. day, national yeah. donut day. So yeah. those are fun ones that you can just kind of put in yeah. and it, it eats up a day and you can do a fun promotion or a fun piece of content and that's that makes it really easy right mm -hmm. and then but it's important you know don't plan it out and be rigid about it you need to remain 
flexible and mm -hmm. fluid because something might happen. Mm -hmm. You might get the last booth in an event that you weren't expecting and it's like, okay, now we've got to post about that. So make sure you're able to kind of slot that in when needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Danny, is there any other pearls of wisdom that you'd like to share with our viewers? Yes, um, I think try new things. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to take manageable risks. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're, whether or not you have a Fortune 500 company or a small business, you're kind of in the spotlight. There are billions of people that use these platforms, so be, yeah. you know, be conscious of that, right. but don't let that scare you into just doing the same thing all the mm -hmm. time. You, you know, if you're kind of hitting a wall and your yeah. audience isn't responding like they used to, um, maybe think about changing the voice of the mm -hmm. business like we, like we spoke right. about earlier. Um, Try serving the content a different way. Maybe try taking different types of pictures or videos. Okay. Um, take small risks and then kind of build up to, to something bigger. All right. We're out of time. That was great that information. Really Thank you so much, Danny. You're really, welcome. really for valuable me. information. We'll have to wrap it up. Uh, John, would you like to share your quote of the day? Yes. Uh, our quote of today is from Norman Vincent Peale, which says, Change your thoughts and you change your world. Danny Ledestro's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services' webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com, and landing page, danelia.org. Thank you so much, Danny, uh, for joining us today, sharing your insights to you, uh, your keys to success on social media. Keys to success, well, Think Tech Keys to Success will not be on next Thursday uh, at 11 a.m. With our deepest regrets and uh, Danili and I, this is our last show. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed being your hostess here on uh, in the studio on Think Tech, and it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, working with uh, Cass here, Zuri and Nick and Jay, uh, it was just a wonderful experience for us. But it's time for us to move on. And uh, we ask that all of our viewers continue to tune in to Think Tech Hawaii. My name's Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We um, thank you all. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> you can go along with that. Aloha. Aloha, everybody. Uh, all right. Thank Thanks you. for having me, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.